Here's a TLDW for you. Too long, didn't watch. I like these dice. They're really cool looking. They feel great. But maybe I'm a little worried about consistency of the rolls. But other than that, I love these. I would give them four out of five stars. Nice. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at this set of D&D dice. It's a set of seven dice made by a brand called Guan Shuo. And this is specifically the, the type because there's different kinds you can get. Um, this is the Copper 4 set. So let's take a look at these dice. In addition to coming in this really cool, nice uh, black... Um, it's just a soft cotton. It's not quite suede, but it's a really nice soft bag. Um, they were wrapped. That bag was in this bag and each individual dice was wrapped in its own individual bag and in very well uh, packaged. All the dice were in perfect shape when I got them. Good job there. Let's take a look at the dice themselves. All right, here they are. Here they are. Really nice looking dice. They've got a really good weight to them. Um, it comes with each kind you would need. Um, it's got, uh, let me see, let's go through them one at a time. Here's your D4. The artwork is really well done. You can see the, the sheen on the dice. It's got a, um, an enamel coat on it that really brings out the shine of each dice. Here's your D8. Similar artwork. The artwork is the same on each side. Um, and it just has a different number for each one. Your D20. Again, it's the same artwork on each of the sides. Nice shine. Again, a good weight to it. Very nice weight. D12. Your D6. It's your classic. You can also see that here on each corner is a slight little bevel to kind of take the edge off, which is really nice. It's true on uh, several of these dice. You've got your set now of your D10s. What's really nice about having a set of these instead of just a single one is that you can have one of these roll for the single digits. Um, so this would be rolling for like one through nine. And then if you need to roll above nine, you add this dice. And when you roll them together, so if you were to roll say that, you combine 70 with six and you actually have 76. So these, these dice together are really nice for rolling any number from one to 100, which is pretty cool. Next thing I wanna do is let's roll these dice and roll them compared to a typical resin-based dice that you'd normally get in a store, just to see the weight of them and just to get an idea of how they bounce and how they move comparison to what you're used to. So let's take a look at that. D4. Seems to like pretty much stick the landing right on the get-go. Let's take a look at a typical um, resin dice. It's a little bit more bounce to it. A little bit more D6. So let's roll this dice. Okay. But it doesn't seem to bounce too much less than a typical resin dice. Yeah, the resin dice definitely bounces around a little bit more. You can definitely feel the weight on the metal dice compared to the, the resin. It definitely has a lot more weight to it. It feels really solid. So there's your D8. So we've got our 10s. So let's roll these together, see how they do. Okay, they don't seem to have much difference. Yeah, no, the resins do roll a little bit longer. Again, it's just a time observation. We're not looking at accuracy or anything here. We're just looking at the time, so. Okay, there are your 10s. Let's take a look at our D12s. So yeah, as they get bigger, they roll, the resin version rolls a little bit more before it finds its home, whereas the metal seems to settle a little bit faster. D20. Let's take a look at these. So for sure, this D20, it just lands and sticks the landing really quickly. Feels really solid, really nice.
if you're playing D&D, you want to make sure that you're not, you don't have a dice that's just going to kill your character all the time um, or the dice that's going to make them roll nat 20s all the time. You don't want either of those situations. So let's do a quick test for each of these dice. I'm going to roll them a certain number of times. Um, I'll do it on fast forward so I don't bore you to death, but we'll roll each dice and then we're going to calculate to see how balanced they are. So let's take a look at that right now. So for the D4, um, what I did is I rolled it 20 times. And since it has four sides, you would expect that each side should present itself five times. Four times five is 20. So when I did that, um, I got uh, the number one came up four times. Number two came up five times. The number four only came up three times. And then the number four came up eight times. So it was slightly varied. But then again, I only rolled it 20. The sample size was pretty small. Let's move on to the next dice. Here are the results for our D6. Um, for the most part, we were rolling on average. Um, it is a small sample size, so I admit that. There was no dead ringers. There was no side that didn't roll at all or only rolled a one. There was no side that rolled a, um, any more than one above average. So roughly scientifically, I think this dice did pretty well. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, I just got done rolling my first rolls of the D8. They were really distributed weirdly. I didn't roll two at all. So maybe my sample size might be too small. I'm gonna go and finish out a set of 48 rolls. Okay, so I just came back from rolling a, a set of 48 rolls with the D8. So there should be six on each side where we would expect all of them to be even six, somewhere under, some were over, but the one that was clearly over and weirdly over was four. For some reason, I always rolled four statistically more than the others. I'm not sure if there's anything there, but just to let you know, you can use this information any way you see fit. I just got done rolling the D10 dice. I only rolled one of them, not the, um, the single digit one, not the double digit one. I'm going to make the assumption that these dice are weighted the same uh, because they are made out of the same material and it's essentially the same thing except for the slightly different in the engraving. I found a really interesting thing. Um, I did a sample size of 40 rolls, so I would expect every side to come up four times. Um, for the most part, it was three, four, or five, which is what I would expect. However, um, the major difference was the number six came up seven times, which was significant. It was two points higher than, or three points higher than normal, but four points higher than I would expect. And then sadly, the number zero only came up one time. Out of 40 rolls, the 10 only came up one time. That's a little unusual. So really high on the six, almost nothing on the 10. It scares me a little bit as a D&D player for whatever that's worth. Okay, just got done rolling the D12. Um, as you get higher in the numbers, uh, the numbers are getting more unusual, but I kind of suspect that's just statistics. I rolled this for a total of 48 times, 12-sided um, dice. You would expect each dice to come up, um, or each side to come up four times. So I'm thinking three to five is probably a good number on average. Um, about half the dice came up three to five range. I never, ever rolled the number four. In the 48 times that I rolled it, I never got a four. That's really unusual. The six, I only got two times. That's kind of weird. Um, but then finally, at the very end, 12, I rolled seven times. I'm smiling on that one because we all like, you know, high rolls. So it feels balanced in my hand. It doesn't feel like it's out of balance in any way. It might just be the way I'm rolling it. It could be the gravity. It could be the rotation of the earth. I don't know. But those are the numbers. Let's move on to... The last but not least, of course, the D20. Whew, okay, 50 rolls halfway through. I want to get to 100 for this D20. D20 is very important. Let's keep going. 
it decides a lot of fates in D&D. So it's probably rolled more often than others. 100 rolls, uh, I would expect each side to come up about five times. So anywhere between um, four, five, or six times would I would consider normal for this roll. So the ones that came either above or below that, um, one rolled seven times, a bit higher. Two rolled eight times. Eight only rolled three. So the number eight rolled a little lower, whatever that means. Um, 15 only rolled twice. I thought that was unusual. 16 rolled seven times. And then 17 only rolled three times. 18 rolled 10 times. That's pretty sweet. But then 19 only rolled four times. And then finally, the one we really want to know is the 20. And the 20 rolled exactly five times. It's inconclusive. It's not like absolutely conclusive, like, oh, this is completely even. But at the same time, there's some weird results which I can't explain. Okay, let's talk about the conclusion of these beautiful dice. Let's be honest, they're quite beautiful. They are really weighty. They've got it like they just feel really solid. I mean, they're made out of metal, right? Uh, you'd expect them to be. They're also just beautifully crafted. They're very smooth. They have a beautiful sheen to them. Um, as you're rotating, you can see the light kind of glistening off them. The numbers are actually engraved slightly. They're embossed with um, a dark, like black um, color inside the groove to kind of help the number pop. That is working really well. The um, sharper of the dice, the painful D4, the tops are, you know, beveled just a little bit so they're not sharp because that could be very sharp. These are metal. I really, really like these dice. One of the things I will mention is that during my testing, I rolled this D20 a hundred times. But what I did notice is when I was doing this shake, um, after a little while, my hand started to hurt a little bit. I mean, you got metal banging around inside your hand um, and it's pretty weighty. So it's going to be a, maybe make your hands a little sore if you if you do roll like this and you roll very frequently. One other thing I want to consider is when you have multiple dice, you want to roll at the same time and you do that. Time is to tell whether or not these will start to chip or the enamel will start to fall off or whatnot when they start banging against each other because it is metal on metal. Yeah, so like I said at the beginning of this video, I really like these dice. Um, I'm going to bring them with me to my D&D sessions. I'm going to pull them out for special rolls just because it's fun to uh, use special dice for special rolls. Yeah, I, I'm a little worried about the consistency or the um, ability to roll evenly across all the numbers, but you know what? That's what half the fun of D&D is about. It's the unpredictability, and why not have a little fun while you're doing it and, um, and show off these fancy dice. So overall, I give these a four out of five. Very well done. Highly recommended. Thank you for watching this review. Hopefully you found it helpful in picking out a set of D&D &D dice for yourself. Have a good one.